What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over presentational fields in Payload CMS. Before we get started though, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss an update. Now, let's dive in. The main fields we covered in the last video can be organized in your Payload CMS instance by using the following fields that I've called layout fields. Payload calls a few of these presentational fields. This includes the row, tabs, collapsible, and group fields. Presentational fields do not store data in your database, but they give you a way to organize and present the main fields we discussed in the previous video. Let's get started with tabs. Tabs are useful when you want to keep different sections of your site in separate large groups. These can either be representational, do not store data in the database, or a data field, which do store data in the database. When you name a tab, it is automatically included as a data field. Let's take a look real quick. So now that I'm logged in, I can go over to my blogs collection and just open up any blog here. So I see my post collection here with my fields down here. I'm gonna come over here and create a new field in my blog post collection. And then I'm just going to use type of tabs and then I'm not going to name it yet. So I'm just going to use tabs, which is going to expect an array of objects, which I'll then put fields and then I will have a label here. So label will be required if you do not name it and fields are always required. So for fields, I'm just gonna come down and use this number field that we created in a previous video and paste it here in my test tab. So now when I save this and I open a blog post, I see this test tab here. But if I go into the API up here, there is no tab. So the data did not get saved to the database. And even if I were to add a number here and save it, so we can see the number show up here in the API, it is still not included in a tab on the back end. Now, if we were to name this tab, that would change things. So I'm going to set name to test and remove the label. And when I save that, nothing changes. Test is still there. My number went away. And if I save this, I'm still gonna see my old number, but now I see this new number underneath the tab test. So this now saves data at the database level. Since tabs can be either representational or a data field, name is optional, just like you saw. You don't need to include it if you don't want to, and then you only want the tabs field to organize your backend and not write data to it. This is useful for times when you want to organize how you see the data in your admin panel, but you don't want to add an extra layer when rendering the information on your front end. That means the only required fields needed to initialize your tabs is the type field and two new options, which we just covered, fields and label. Fields should be an array of all the fields you would like to include in your tab, while label should be a string that labels your tab so you know which tab you want to store which fields. So over here we see that test right here is uppercase. Well, we want the name to be lowercase, so when we're rendering on the front end, it's easier to keep everything lowercase, but we want it to show up as something else in the admin panel. So I'm gonna set this as blog content for the label. So when I save this and go to edit, again, our number gets cleared out. We're still gonna see that test tab that we had before, but now I see the blog content label, even though the name hasn't changed, and I'm gonna set a number. And before I do that, I'm also gonna add another field, just so you can see that together in one tab. So now we have both the number and the blog content in a tab. In order to really see this though, we need to add another tab. So we're gonna come down to the end of the tabs array and we're gonna add another tab, which we'll call name test two. Then we'll include fields and we're going to include these two fields here. And now when I save this, I'll have blog content and test two. We can see the two fields here in blog content and the two other fields here in test two. And then if I add fields here, so we have data all within, we can see we have our test two and our test and no data in our test tab, which is called blog content now. So I will add some data there. So we can go over to the API and we now see test with number 2000 and test two with its own 
information there as well. A great use case for tabs is when you want to have an easy way to store large sections of your collection in different areas. For example, if you have a hero section, you can have one tab for the hero section, another tab for the general content of your page, and then a third tab that handles all of the SEO information for the page. This flexibility means you don't need to scroll through a lot of data to get to specific parts of your admin UI. You can just click on the SEO tab, for example, to get to your SEO information, and then click back on over to your hero tab and make edits there. The next field we'll talk about is the row field. The row field is called a presentational field by the payload CMS team, and this field allows you to align fields horizontally. By default, fields take up 100% of their space, but you can use rows to change that. Since row is presentational and does not store data, you don't need to give it a name. Instead, you only need to provide the type option and the fields option. The fields option is an array of fields that you would like to organize in the row. So here, we can show you that as well. So I'm gonna go back over to edit and we have this title and email fields here at the top. Say I wanna put these into a row. So I can just do a new field, type in type and do row and then the fields, as I mentioned. And now all we have to do is bring these fields up and put them into the fields here. And when I save this, you'll notice nothing changes here. And the reason for that is that using the row field by itself will still let all the fields take up 100% of the available space. So to get the full benefit of the row field, you'll need to provide an admin.width to the fields inside the row. This field should be a string representation of a percentage value in order to work properly. For example, if you want a field to take up 50% of the container width, you should go to your admin, type in width, and then you want 50% there. And then we're gonna do the same thing down in the email field where we're just gonna add width of 50%. So now when I refresh, assuming the screen width is large enough, we'll see two rows there. And so if you wanted to do one that was 75% and another that was 25%. You can do that as well. All you have to do is make sure that you're giving the percentage in a string value. One thing to call out here on row fields, you cannot use a description with row fields. Read only and hidden are also excluded from the row fields admin configuration. So you won't be able to hide your row field or prevent it from being edited. The collapsible field is presentational only and is just used to organize the admin panel. This allows you to group fields together into an organized, collapsible box that can be expanded or collapsed without adding an extra layer to be rendered on the front end. Since the collapsible field is presentational, you don't need to give it a name. All you need to do is give it type, fields, and label options. The label option allows you to have some flexibility as well. You can provide a string, a component, or a function using the data and path arguments. This function will allow you to programmatically set the label of the collapsible field based on data from within the field, which we can go over in a later example. So let's take a look at how this works. So say we want to add our row. We won't add our tabs, but we'll add our row into a collapsible field. So we'll just do type collapsible. And then we'll do fields as an array. And then we'll add a label, which will be test collapsible. So here in the fields, we'll just take everything from the row and paste it up here into the fields and save that. And we see it added to this test collapsible group here. But nothing has changed. So you still see the data here and you won't see anything on the API either. So it's purely presentational. You also have the ability to set the initial state of the collapsible field. So here we saw that it was immediately expanded upon us opening the dashboard. If we set our collapsible admin init collapsed to true, we'll see that it is initially closed on all of our other blog posts as well. Array fields are data fields. They're not presentational. These fields will help you organize your admin panel, but they'll also store the values of your fields as an array of values in your database to be looped through on the front end. You need to include the type, name, and fields options when initializing an array field. And the fields option needs to be an array of fields you would like to have repeated as you add a new row to your array. So here, if we want to add that whole collapsible, 
into a new array. We can do type array name. We'll do collapsible array, and then we'll do fields. And here we can just add this whole collapsible field into our array. And when we do that, we'll have an option to add collapsible arrays to our post. So if I do that, I can then open this up, do a test for each of these, and then add another one. And then when I save this, we can see here in the API, we have our collapsible array array with the two rows that we added. Similar to the collapsible field, you can set the initial collapse state by setting admin init collapsed. So if I come back over here and I go up to the array and I do admin init collapsed, and we can add a comma there and then set that to true, we'll see that that brings down our collapsible array items and collapses them down into single lines there. You can also set admin is sortable to true to allow you to sort the array fields children by dragging and dropping the fields in the order you want them to be in. So that's automatically by default included. But if you don't want to allow sort, you can set is sortable to false and that'll remove the handles so these can no longer be dragged and dropped. You also have the option to set custom row labels using a custom component, but again, we'll cover things like that in a later video. You may also want to set the maximum and minimum number of rows you want this field to have. By default, this isn't defined, so if you don't have min rows or max rows set, you could have zero rows or hundreds of rows. When setting these, be sure to have the final design in mind so you know how many rows are required to complete the project. So we'll just say that we want a max rows of four. And just to show you how this works, I can click through and add four rows before that plus sign goes away and I'm no longer able to add in any more rows. Like array fields, group fields are data fields, not presentational. So while they do allow you to organize your fields in a nice layout, group fields will save data to the database. The way this works is that the group name becomes a common property name for all of its children fields. For example, if you have a group field named group and you have a field nested within your group field and its name is child, that field's value will be saved as group.child in your database. And I can show you how that works. So I'm just gonna create two new fields. One is gonna be our group field with the name group, just like I said, and we'll have fields. And we're just going to set another field and we'll just do type text with the name child and I'm going to save that and we're going to see that pop up here at the top and so we have group child and if I do test and go to the API we then see that we have group child with the value of test and so you can build out these groups to be any number of things so if we wanted to add that array to the group we could do that by just cutting all of that adding a comma there and pasting everything in there and that's going to group all of this together where we can then add a couple of empty arrays, hit the API, and then we see group child, and then we can see it's gonna be group.child, group.collapsibleArray.id.id.id. The name, type, and fields options, as you just saw, are required for a group field with the fields option being an array of fields you would like to group together. Be sure to understand how groups will be used on the front end. It can be confusing if you have data in a group field that won't be used in the same portion of your front end as it is in the back end. I've run into issues where I've created a group called sidebar to group some fields into the sidebar of my admin panel. And then on the front end had to include dot sidebar on my front end, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Each of these fields can help you organize and group your payload CMS admin panel in ways that make sense and streamline your work. Beyond nesting fields together, you can then use these fields to build blocks of fields to then be used throughout the rest of your project. There are more fields, and one we will come back to in a later video is blocks. But first, we will need to cover the relationship fields. Now make sure you don't miss that video or any of the other videos I make about Payload CMS by subscribing to this channel and getting notifications for each time a new video is released. I'll see you next time.